Hey there and welcome back to the channel. Today we're still going through the Blackheath High School past paper. So let's get straight into it and go through the rest of these questions. Okay, so here we have another question and this tests our understanding of different definitions within maths, which we need to know for our exam. So starting off pretty easy, part A, from these numbers, which one is an even number? We know odd even numbers, so this should be pretty easy. It's going to be 22. 22 is our even number. Okay, part B, let's find a multiple of nine. So multiple of nine means it's going to be in the nine times table and it's going to be bigger than nine, right? Multiples go up, factors go down. So if we think about it, nine times one is nine, nine times two is 18, then we have 27, 36. And I think we should have already gotten to one of the answers or gotten to the answer, which is 27 as a multiple of nine, right? So by multiple of nine, we mean a number that can be divided by nine and it will give us a whole number. So 27 can be divided wholly by nine. And then for part C, we have a square number and this is going to be 25. And that's because 25 is the result of doing five times five or five squared, multiplying five by itself. So five times five, 25. And then we have D, a factor of 87. So now factor, factors go down. So for this, we're trying to work out the numbers that go into 87. So here, if we think about it, if we have 87, what numbers can we multiply together to give us 87? Well, it could actually be 29 and three because 20 times three is 60 and nine times three is 27 and 60 plus 27 is 87. So here we know that 29 is a factor of 87 because 29 goes into 87 three times. And then we have a prime number. So important definition wise, a prime number will have two factors. So we just talked about factors here. Prime number has two factors, right? Itself and one, itself and one. That's why one is not prime because one only has one factor, itself. Because itself is the same thing as one. So one is not a prime number. Our first prime number is going to be two because two can be divided by itself and one. So here, let's find a prime number. It's going to be 23. Why? Because 23 only has two factors, itself, 23, and one. No other number can go into 23. And finally, for part F, we have a triangle number. And again, for our 11 plus exam, we need to understand what triangle numbers are. And they're not that complex, thankfully. All they are, are numbers related to building an equilateral triangle. That's the best way to think about it. So here, we have an equilateral triangle, one here, second one here. Can we see that we have equilateral triangles, right? But can you also see the number of blocks that we need to make up these equilateral triangles? For here, on this first one, we need three dots or three blocks. Then we need one, two, three, four, five, six. Then we'll need, if we have a base of four, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, one. It's going to be how many? Well, four plus three is seven, plus two is nine, plus one is 10. So you can see that as we get bigger and bigger and bigger, 
we need more dots to make that equilateral triangle. And the number of dots represents our triangle numbers. But you can also see how they're kind of going up in a consistent pattern. Three to six is plus three, six to 10 is plus four, then it's plus five, so on and so forth. So those are our triangle numbers. That's how triangle numbers work. And it's something we just need to know. But as you can see, once you understand it, it's not too complex. The triangle number here is 21, which is what we get when we try and make our fifth equilateral triangle. Okay, so here for question nine, we have to fill in these spaces to make all of these fractions equal. So what we have to do here is we have to start on this fraction, because this fraction tells us what we have to turn all these fractions into. Because this fraction here, two over six, shows that we want all these fractions to equal to two over six, which is one over three. Or in other words, the best way to think about this is when we have one over three, this is simply a scenario where the numerator, remember top is numerator, numerator, bottom is denominator, denominator. Now we want a scenario where the denominator is three times the size of the numerator. And once we understand this, it makes this question super easy because all we have to use are our times tables. Because for this first one, it's going to be one over three. We know that already. Then for this third one, it's going to be 18. Well, what times three equals 18? It's going to be six, six, 12, 18. And here we times it by three, 21, seven, 14, 21. Here we divide it by three, giving us 20, 20, 40, 60. So here we have our answers. All these fractions are now equal because yes, although they're different numbers, we can cancel them down to one over three. Or in other words, for all of these fractions here, one over three is these fractions in their simplest form, simplest form. Okay, so here for this question, what do we do? We have to use our ruler to measure the length and width of this rectangle as accurately as we can. So let's do this, of course, in your exam, you use your own real ruler, but here all we have is this makeshift ruler. So let's line it up and let's see what it gives us. So. Let's say this is one centimeter and then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight centimeters. Let's call this length eight. And then the width, you'll take it, spin your ruler around, line it up. And let's see what it gives us. Here we have one, two, three, four point five. Okay. So here it's four point five centimeters. So that's part A done. But now let's do part B. Use your answers to work out the perimeter of the rectangle. So no matter what numbers you got, you might have gotten different numbers, maybe six and 2.5 or whatever you, you got. Either way, we work out the perimeter the same way. Remember, perimeter is the distance around the outside of the shape. So here, all we're going to do is take our numbers. So if we use my numbers here, eight and 4.5, eight here, eight here, 4.5 here, 4.5 here. So we do eight plus 4.5 plus eight, plus 4.5, all the way around, eight, 4.5, eight, 4.5. So basically what we have here are two lots of eight and two lots of 4.5. So 
So 8 plus 8 gives us 16. 4.5 plus 4.5 gives us 9. Then we have 16 plus 9 giving us 25. So the perimeter is 25 centimeters. So here for this question, we see that we have to put rings around all the numbers which are equal to 75%. So this question is simply about understanding fraction to decimal to percentage conversion, right? So we need to know how to convert this percentage, 75%, into different forms. And through doing that, we'll know what it's equal to within this list. So the main thing to understand here is we need to understand percentage language. In the percentage world, in the percentage universe, the whole is 100%. The whole is 100%. So that means when we see a percentage like 75%, all this really means is that we have 75% of 100%, which is the whole in the percentage world, in the percentage universe. But you see, that gives us so much information. That's so helpful because as soon as we know it's 75% out of 100%, we can already start to see how this can become something like a fraction because now we take out the percentage signs, the common factor of the percentage, and we have 75 over 100, which is a fraction, the fraction form of 75%. We can then cancel down this fraction, we can take out the common factor of 25 because 25 times three, or i put it in black, times three is 75, and 25 times four is 100, which means that 75 over 100 can be reduced to three over four, three quarters. So that already lets us know that this has to be equal to 75%. And this fraction also is equal to 75%. But then also we know that 6 over 8 is going to be equal to 75%. Because simply, if we multiply the top and bottom by 2, so numerator times it by 2, denominator times it by 2, we get 6 over 8. So 3 over 4 is simply a simplified version of 6 over 8, the same way if it was 60 over 80. Again, 3 quarters is simply the simplest form of 60 over 80, same thing. So those are the fractions that are equal to 75%. 75 over 100, 6 over 8, which can be 3 over 4, and of course, 3 over 4, 3 quarters. But then we move on to decimals, right? We have some decimals and we need to know whether or not these are equal to 75%. So now how do we go from percentage to decimal? Well, that's why it's so important to know how to first go from percentage to fraction, because once we get to fraction, we can go really easily to decimal because let's take 75 over 100. Okay, so now let's look at the rest of these numbers. We know already that 34% is not equal to 75%. So we're left with these three decimals. So how can we work this out? Well, again, we're going to need to use conversion. But what's really helpful is once we already know how to go from percentage to fraction, it becomes super easy to go from fraction to decimal. So let's take the fraction form of 75%, 75 over 100. What does this actually mean? This actually means we're taking the numerator, 75, and we're dividing it by the denominator, 100. So it's 75 divided by 100. And what happens when we have 75.0, 75, same thing. The point zero does nothing. What happens when we divide this by 100? Well, the decimal point goes two steps back. It goes two bunny hops back in the left direction. And it ends up over here. So one bunny hop, two bunny hops. So now it's no longer 
75.0, but instead it's 0 0.75, 0 0.75. So now this is the decimal form of this percentage, 75%. And we can see this is right here. So now we know it's not this, it's not this, but this is the correct decimal that represents 75%. So here are our answers. 75 over 100, three quarters, six over eight, and 0 0.75. Okay, so that is all for today. Make sure you like the video, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you're the first to know when the next video is released. And on that note, I will see you all next time.